you know, like that. I want to talk a little bit about the charismatic renewal, um, and I want to kind of maybe couch it this way. Okay. You, know, you, you talk, you, you think about this revolution that took place among the mendicant orders, the Dominicans and the Franciscans, like yes, this explosion yes, 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 yes. of vocations. Yeah, 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 it's hardly yeah. believable when you mm. hear the numbers of young men that were leaving everything to join Francis. Yes, and yes. So you might hear about that, hear about all the good, and then you look around and go, well, where, where, where are they now? Why aren't, where are the big Franciscan orders? And obviously there are some doing some good, but it's nothing like that seemed to be. And so you think yes. to yourself, would you mm. maybe... <clears throat> Maybe it was all for naught, forgetting <laughs> the fact that these tens of thousands of men who influenced tens of thousands of others might be before the Lord now because of this explosion of grace, right? Yes. Yeah. And I want to liken that maybe to whatever happened, because <laughs> I yes. wasn't there, in the 70s and 80s of this yes. very explosive, I think it's probably hard for people my age and younger to even understand what was taking place in the church that time, this mm. explosion of grace that was messy, it yes. sometimes got weird, <laughs> yeah, true. and yet mm. souls were being saved. Yes. I want you to talk about that, but I, I also want you to talk about mm. it realizing that a lot of people have very negative views about the charismatic community, right? Because maybe they grew right. up in a covenant community, and they yes, saw the yes, yes, filth yes, yes, and the... Yes. You, you see, you see mm. what I'm saying? So mm. it might sound good on paper, but it got weird, it got cultish. And then you somehow link up this charismatic renewal with the bizarre liturgical yes. dancing stuff and the liturgical abuses. Mm. Um, is it salvageable? Do you really want to go back to the 70s and 80s when this thing was exploding? Should it look different today? Should we tr be trying to recreate it? You see what I'm saying, I think. Yeah, that's fine. Um, <laughs> how do I meet that man? <laughs> well, I think... Um, uh, in those early days, we were very, very much, as you say, like enthused and, and full of um, uh, tremendous enthusiasm for the Lord. But it's only over years that we've gained the wisdom, really, uh, to know how best to um, minister this grace, really. Um, when I think of the things we sometimes did uh, in our youth ministry and all that sort of thing, I mean, I think that, wow. But we got away with it. But like, um, but it was, it was the Lord. But there's always a lot of humanity in, in any yeah. movement of God, isn't there? Yeah. You know, and, and, and especially when there's a, a strong movement of the Lord, as this was, um, a lot of our own... Um, idiosyncrasies come up, you know, mm -hmm. as well. Uh, and it sort of confuses the whole thing, really. Um, but on the other hand, I don't think we should underestimate um, the supernatural, uh, that God's supernatural action, you know, because there's a tendency of some people uh, not to really sort of believe that God can do miracles, for example, yeah. you know. And oh, that prophecy is real, mm -hmm. or, or um, that you, know, you can lay hands on people the sick and they can be healed. Mm -hmm. You know um, uh, that uh, those those sort of manifestations are actually like meant to be almost commonplace in the church. I would believe. Mm -hmm. You know, they certainly were in the early church, and so the charismatic gifts um, should not be sort of squeezed out. You know. And thankfully, at the Second Vatican Council, they actually, uh, in Chapter 12 of um, Lumen Gentium, they made it very clear that we're not just a sacramental church, we're a right. charismatic church, right? Yes. And that the two go together. Mm -hmm. Our institution, and John Paul II was very strong in, in insisting that we're co-essentially an institutional church and a charismatic church. That's good. You know, co-essential. Co so it's like this, that the charis charisms are essential. But then, of course, charisms need to be exercised responsibly. And that was part of the problem is that <laughs> <laughs> people were getting charisms and exercising them very irresponsibly, right, you know. And, and that can sort of, of course, then present a bad image, yeah. really. Um, and there's been a lot of silly stuff, of course, you know. Um, and... Um, Unfortunately, and unfortunately too, I think a lot of people who experienced that new influx of the Holy Spirit thought, oh, there's no place for me in the Catholic Church, so they went and joined some other group. Mm -hmm. And that was a very sad outcome. But 
But overall, though, the fruit has been very good, okay. you know, and the lives of thousands and thousands of people, or millions of people, really, yeah. have been transformed through this this grace. And it still goes on, but I think in a much more mature fashion. Okay. Right? I think we've matured, if, if, you, if you can say that. Yeah. You know? Um, in the way that we're ministering the grace, it's, really. Just to make a quick analogy to embarrass mm. myself, it, it's like a ch- it's like a child who who encounters something incredible and doesn't know how to handle it. I mean, exactly. I was seventeen when I came to the Lord, or He came yeah. to me, yeah. and I went bananas. <laughs> I remember <laughs> I, I was serving <laughs> alcohol at a club, and so I was working at this club, yes. Yes. and I just was scandalized by the sin and the immodesty. So I f- check this out Thursday. You'll love this. You haven't heard this story. So I found the music and I pulled the plug and I just proclaimed about Jesus Christ in the <laughs> middle of this club, just yelling about the good goodness of God. Yeah, right. Yeah. Now he says he loves me so much. Thank you. Appreciate that. But it's like, it's easy. It's, it's so easy to get tired. Oh, it's so easy to get tired. Yes. When I got married, the day I got married, this woman said to me, you get married today? Turn and run. That's what she said, right? It's the same idea. It's yes. so easy to be cynical. It's the it easiest is, it? thing in the world. It is, of course. This it life's is. bloody hard and it exactly. knocks you around yeah. and you feel plagued with disappointments. Mm-hmm. And right. it's, Sorry. it's Sorry. easy to, to look at that young man in the club and be like, what a bloody idiot. <laughs> and maybe he was, but for the Lord. <laughs> and it's probably easy to look at these blooming things that you experience and go that was nuts yeah. and yeah maybe it was like maybe it was, there was an immaturity there but that's it, right but it came out of this desire to respond to the lord and it turns out the lord knows how to write on crooked lines and can yes. m- maneuver uh idiosyncratic whatever people you know exactly yeah Hey, thank you so much for watching. Before you go, do us a favor, leave a comment, let us know what you thought of the video, like and subscribe.